Hi! Many of you are probably familiar with this image, the microscopic image of structures that look like some kind of microorganisms in a rock. And not just some rock, in a meteorite from Mars. It is called Allen Hills 84001. And decades ago it made headlines. In 1996 Bill Clinton announced the potential discovery at a press conference. To be fair, neither Bill Clinton nor authors of the original paper claimed that they had proved the existence of life on Mars. It was a hypothesis they had to explain data they'd got studying the meteorite. Still, many scientists were quite skeptical, but anyway, the whole story is very interesting. Obviously, the motivation of scientists was a little bit more complicated than <laughs> space worms. There were multiple lines of evidence which other scientists tried to disprove in follow-up articles and debate continued for years. So what was it? Today we are talking about the story of this unusual piece of rock from Mars. How do we even know it's from Mars and how did it get here? Why researchers believed that what they had found could have been explained by life? And we'll also talk about some recent findings concerning ALH 84001. My name is Andre and this is Cosmos Elementary. The meteorite Allen Hills 84001 was found in a place where most of the meteorites are found on Earth, in Antarctica. The database of the Meteoritical Society contains records of over 60,000 found meteorites, and almost 45,000 were found in Antarctica. This is not because they just fall there more frequently, but rather dry, snowy desert preserves them better and they are easier to find there. People often look for meteorites in the blue ice fields. The ice turns blue when air bubbles are squeezed out. Meteorites can be buried in snow, then ice is slowly moving to the lower elevation areas and it's eventually stopped by some obstacle. For instance, mountains. Under the dry Antarctic wind, the upper layers of white ice can disappear. Blue ice gets exposed with many of meteorites. This process is sometimes compared with a conveyor belt because it delivers meteorites to certain areas. ALH 84001 was found in such a blue ice area, which is called Allen Hills. It is located over here. It was picked up by a search group on snowmobiles. The second part of the name, 84001, means that it was the first meteorite found in the 1984-85 search season. At first, it was not identified as a Martian meteorite. Scientists and engineers spent decades and lots of money planning and building missions that study Mars. For instance, Curiosity rover cost over 2.5 billion dollars. And yet, capabilities of Mars rovers are obviously limited, though they still produce tons of unique and valuable data. But also there is a plan to deliver samples from Mars to the Earth, where you could do way more with those samples. But from time to time we get those samples without spending billions of dollars in the form of Martian meteorites. Obviously, a controlled at all stages delivery of a sample from a known location is not the same as a rock that spent tens of thousands of years laying in the snow. And yet Martian meteorites have a lot to tell us about the Red Planet and its history. How do those rocks get to the Earth? We need a collision with Mars. Sometimes those collisions can be powerful enough to knock Martian rocks out to space, where they would wander for millions of years until trajectories of some of them intersect with the Earth. And that's how they end up on our planet. Martian meteorites are quite rare. As if today there's only 268 records of Martian meteorites in this database, again out of more than 60,000. But how do we know those specific rocks are from Mars? We can be quite confident, thanks to the missions that studied Martian atmosphere. In the 70s, Viking 1 and 2 landers studied chemical composition of the atmosphere of Mars. In the 80s, scientists studied the meteorite EETA 79001 and found gas trapped in glass inclusions, and the composition of that gas was very similar to that of the Martian atmosphere, which led scientists to believe that it was from Mars. It was confirmed by later and finer data. For instance, Curiosity rover found that the amount and proportion of Argon-36 and Argon-38 supported the idea that those meteorites were from Mars. Basically, we can differentiate them using unique chemical fingerprints. Usually, when we think about extraterrestrial life, we mean life as we know it. Well, because we have only one example that we really understand. Carbon-based life that needs liquid water. 
So when we search for a planet or some other body which could be habitable, we look for components that are necessary for life as we know it. It's liquid water, certain conditions, source of energy and specific chemistry. Modern Mars is not the nicest place for Earth-like life. At the same time, it is possible that some Earth organisms could survive on Mars even today. There were experiments that showed that some lichens survived in the Mars-like conditions recreated in the lab. But the ancient Mars seems to be a much nicer place. Today we have a lot of evidence that billions of years ago Mars was warmer, had a global magnetic field and a thicker atmosphere, and of course, water on the surface lakes, rivers, and perhaps even oceans. The global ocean could have existed around 4 billion years ago, or based on some estimates, even several hundred million years after that. Which is roughly the same time life appeared on our planet. That is why it is often said that there might have been enough time for at least some primitive life forms to appear on early Mars, before it became a lifeless desert. Besides the conditions that are necessary for life as we know it, we can try to look for some signs of life. Some markers that could be explained by life, but of course it doesn't mean that it is life. And that's basically the main thing in the story of ALH 84001. And yet, it's not that simple. The important feature of this meteorite is its age. It's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, among all of the Martian meteorites. Its age is about 4 or 4.5 billion years which means we have a rock from the era when Mars could have been much more habitable. The collision that threw the rock into space happened around 16 million years ago. How do we know it? For this, we have to thank cosmic rays. Thanks, cosmic rays! In short, high-energy particles bombard certain elements, and as a result, certain isotopes are formed. When in space, a rock is exposed to a specific amount of cosmic rays. So, based on how much certain isotopes there are, we can figure out how much time it spent in space. In this case, a series of studies used helium-3, neon-21, argon-38 and krypton-81. ALH-84001 arrived at Earth about 13,000 years ago, which was determined using carbon-14 dating. The fragment had spent billions of years on Mars. This is the original 1996 study. It was conducted by David McKay with a group of scientists. The conclusion that there could have been life on ancient Mars is based on four main lines of evidence. Researchers found carbonate globules inside fractures of ALH84001. On Earth, they can be associated with life, but at the same time, they can have nothing to do with life. Based on isotopic composition, authors concluded that those globules formed on Mars. They could have formed 3.6 billion years ago, when Mars was a nicer place. Also, those globules have distinct, layered structure, which could have biological nature. One of the controversial things about those globules was their formation temperature. It could be around 700 degrees Celsius. And that doesn't sound good for life hypothesis, but David McKay with his team wrote that based on stable oxygen isotopic data, it was probably something between 0 and 80 degrees Celsius, which is more promising for life. Now the second point. There was some organics found in those globules. Specifically polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. They are found both on Earth and in space. Authors claim that it was not a contamination by Earth's PAHs. And also, they are different from other meteorites. And most importantly, one of the ways PAHs form is by decomposition of living organisms. But again, it's just one of many ways. The third line of evidence is microscopic mineral particles that could be produced by life forms. Specifically, magnetite crystals. On Earth, some bacteria produce magnetite to navigate. According to the article, purity, shape and structure of magnetite crystals in ALH 84001 is similar to those made by some bacteria on Earth. These are comparison images. And yet again, authors mentioned that it could form without any life being involved. But also, those particles were grouped in the unusual way. And only now those wormy things. Structures that resemble earthly microorganisms. They are also found inside carbonate globules. The researchers claim that these could be microfossils. Scientists conducted experiments to eliminate the chance that these are contaminants from Earth. The main point against the idea that those were actually microfossils is the size. They are orders of magnitude smaller than known microorganisms on Earth. 
In the article, they are compared with the so-called nanobacteria, which is in itself a controversial topic. Nowadays, what used to be called nanobacteria is not associated with life anymore. But again, authors of the article themselves emphasize that each of those four lines of evidence could have non-biological nature. But the main conclusion is that even though each of the lines can be dismissed separately, taking into account the age of the meteorite, all four lines combined could be explained by activity of living organisms. They could be the evidence for life on Mars. But that was not the discovery of life. David McKay, with his team, had counter-arguments for each of the lines of evidence. And yet, the scientific community was quite skeptical and articles were written about every single point. The most difficult one to disprove was magnetite. But later, the group of scientists, including David McKay's brother Gordon, ouch, managed to recreate in a lab magnetite crystals very similar to those in ALH 84001. They were also inside globules. David McKay found some differences, but for the most of scientific community, that was enough. On the one hand, all of the four lines of evidence can be recreated without life, but that doesn't mean they weren't formed by life. But that works both ways. At the same time, no one claimed that they had definitely discovered life on Mars. That was a hypothesis. A potential discovery of extraterrestrial life is such an extraordinary thing that it requires such a solid evidence that we simply don't have now. There were some other Martian meteorites like this one that had features that could be linked to life. ALH 84001 is still being studied. A couple of months ago, a study came out which told about first detection of 4 billion year old nitrogen bearing organics in this meteorite, another building block of life. There's organics on Mars even now, but this new discovery can mean that ancient Mars was organic rich. But there is another positive side to this story. The whole situation sparked the interest of Mars exploration, budgets for space missions increased, and many of subsequent missions, including rovers, happened not without the influence of ALH 84001 and that 1996 study. It also affected the development of astrobiology. And even if we still don't know if there is life on Mars, at least now we know way more about the Red Planet and perhaps we'll be able to answer that question in future. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye.